Hello, hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to the part 2 of the fried liver attack. In this part, we will be seeing the main variation where the king comes to e5 and when the knight comes to b4, it goes to e7 and also it comes in some variations to d4. So, before starting, if you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and also please hit the bell icon so as to get the notifications for all my upcoming videos. So, let's get started. So, before starting, let's revise the last video's variations. Here we had seen that the king captures the knight. Queen f3 check. If the king goes to e8, we simply take the knight. From here, we have attacks on the f7 square for a checkmate by the queen as well as our bishop. Also, we have attacks on the knight with our bishop as well as our queen. So from this, it is easily winning position. If the king comes to g8, just like this, then it's a maiden 3. The bishop captures the knight. The queen has to capture because if the bishop comes in between, bishop captures bishop is a lovely checkmate. So queen captures the bishop. We take the queen, bishop has to come in between because the king can't go anywhere from here. So bishop comes in between and like this, it's a smothered checkmate. Moving behind from here, if we will see that the king comes to e7, then it's the same. We will take the knight with the bishop. Because from here you can see that in all the variations, the knight is protected by only the queen. And we are attacking with our queen as well as our bishop. So there should be at least two defenders. So we will take the knight from here. Now if the king goes to g6, the same. We will take the knight. And afterwards we will continue with bishop to f7 check. The king has to come in these dark squares. And we will give a discord check by playing d3 or d4. And this bishop at c1, which is doing nothing, will come into the attack and help the queen and the bishop to do checkmate like this we will get a check on the king so moving on now let's see the main variation which we'll cover today we'll see king to e6 and after that i had tell you that will increase the attackers so we'll go with knight to c3 now from here let's calculate we have three attackers and we have only two defenders so there should be at least one more defender so that the knight doesn't get attacked so from here there are three main variations knight to d4 knight to b4 or knight to e7 to protect this knight in the three variations so first let's check knight to b4 what does knight to b4 does it protects this knight just like this and also attacks the c2 square so as to give a fork on a king as well as on a rook so because of this set, we have to defend the c2 square. So from here, we'll continue with queen to e4. Also attacking the e5 square and also defending the c2 square. From here, the obvious response is c6 to defend this knight. Because this knight can be get kicked away at any moment by a3. So after c6, we'll continue with a3. Because now the knight can't go anywhere. It just has this bad square on a6. If it goes on a6, then we just will continue with d4. Because this pawn is pinned by our queen, will increase the attackers on this pawn. We can continue with bishop to f4, castling and bring our rook out in this open file, attacking aggressively on this king with all our pieces. So from here, the main variation that the engine suggests is to take the pawn on c2, sacrificing a knight because they are already a piece up so they can sacrifice a knight. We'll continue with queen capture c2 and from here you can see that we have in action a queen, a knight is in action, a bishop is in action and also a rook will get into action after castling and also a king is aggressively placed inside. So. From here, we can easily win the position. Moving behind, let's say from here the knight goes to e7. 
protecting the knight from behind. So we'll continue with d4 because d4 is very aggressive. If you see if the e pawn captures d4, ex d4, then we'll continue with knight captures knight. The knight has to capture because the queen can't capture because it would be a free queen. So knight captures and we'll continue with queen to e4 check. From here the king has to move somewhere. If the king comes to d6, then we'll take the knight with a queen like this because our bishop is protected. If the king goes to f6 or f7, we'll simply take the knight with a bishop. Mostly the king will go to f6 because by going on f7 and we'll take the uh, knight with our bishop, there will be a check. And after that our bishop can also come and give us keyword like this. So the king would of course go to f6 and like this we will win the game. Moving behind, if from here uh, black continues with a defending move such as c6 then we will continue by taking the pawn because it's a free pawn here because the king can't take because we will play queen to e4 check or we can bring out our bishop to g5 winning this knight and after that uh, because this knight is pinned. It is not defending this knight anymore. So we will take this knight with a knight and also attack aggressively on this weak king. So from here it is an easy win. Moving behind, let's see one more variation. From here if the knight comes to d4 attacking our queen, then he is forgetting that the knight is only defended by the queen and the king. Only two defenders. But we have our queen, bishop and also the knight. So from here, we can take the knight with a bishop, with giving a check. The king comes here, we will go queen g3, pinning this pawn and also giving the greediness to the opponent. So that if the opponent takes the c2 pawn, giving a fork, we will give away our rook. Because if the knight takes the rook after like this, then we can go with d4, attacking the spinned pawn. And also we can bring our rook like this into the game. Take out a bishop attacking the queen and also win the game. And uh, here there are also spooky checkmate traps. Like let's say our uh, opponent plays a very bad move like a6. Then we can go with queen captures the pawn check. And after this it's a maiden 1. Queen to e6 and it's a checkmate. So like this we can give a greediness to the black side on taking a rook like this. So of course advanced player won't take the rook like this and fall into the trap so most of the players would go c6 attacking our bishop so from here we will go bishop to b3 protecting our bishop as well as protecting the c2 square from the knight from here you can see that our queen is so aggressively placed on g3 our knight is aggressive here and our also bishop is aggressive in this diagonal from here we can proceed by playing d3 bring out our dark square bishop to g5 with a tempo on the queen we can castle we can bring out the rook like this and we can attack aggressively on the king and it would be a hard time to castle on the black side because it is so freely moving in the board it will take five to six moves to castle if you want to castle queen side you have to go first to c7 take out his bishop take out his rook and then go inside and king side then you have to go like this but that is not possible because a bishop is seeing this diagonal. So like this, this was the fried liver attack and all the main variations in the fried liver attack. Hope you like this video of the fried liver attack covering all the variations and I suggest you to try some games against advanced players and also against beginner players and also comment in my comment section telling how was your experience by playing the fried liver attack and please also subscribe my channel and like this video and also see my upcoming videos so till then stay safe and play chess goodbye